Hey, everybody. It's the Drive to School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and uh, my good friend Paige is back. How you doing, Paige? I'm pretty good. How are you? I love that pause. So um, <laughs> here's... Uh, <laughs> That was oh, Midwestern. Uh, it was it was magnificent. Uh, I'm great. How are you? Everything's uh, going. Everything's going. Um, <laughs> we'll unpack that one uh, later, not while recording, but but uh, for 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 right now, um, I want to talk a little bit about growing up, um, and especially when it, it kind of comes to the fourth commandment, uh, the fourth commandment on your mother and your father, your father and your mother, if you're doing it the right way, uh, but the, mm-hmm. the way the catechism taught you. But uh, it's a struggle as we get older, because when, when we are very, very little, um, it, it seems pretty cut and dry. Uh, but but two things happen as we, we start to get older. We, we recognize first our parents are wrong sometimes. Um, and that uh, complicates the issue a little bit. And then we we uh, also recognize, like, I, I still have parents, but what if I'm a grown up and I'm not a child? What if I'm on my way to being a grown up and not a child? Does the fourth commandment ever change? I mean, it never changes because it's God's law. God's law doesn't change, but like it, it kind of evolves and grows. It lives, I guess. So like when okay. you're little, you still need your parents and um, you need that guidance and you need a little bit more of a stricter sense of what honor your father and your mother means. And then as you grow up and you develop a different relationship, because relationships change from when you were a child to when you're mm-hmm. further grown up, I guess, because I still feel like a child, um, even though I'm in my 20s. It doesn't feel like I'm an adult quite yet, but um, it still gives you a little bit of a pause there to be like, hmm, what what does this mean now that I can make my own decisions and have like a little bit more freedom in what I'm doing? Right. And so I, I would sort of push on this just a little bit because it gets messy. You're, you're absolutely right. Um, it, it, it's very cut and dry when my, my son is two, don't touch the stove is an absolute. Um, but at some point in time, it would be cool if he learned to cook. Um, so maybe, maybe we can ask, what does this mean with the catechism, but, but then just sort of back it up even a, a step further. So what does this mean? Uh, the fourth commandment on your father and your mother, it means that we should fear and love God so that we do not despise or anger our parents and other authorities, but honor them, serve and obey them, love and cherish them. Uh, and, and those aren't things that, that lessen over time, although the relationship grows. I think maybe that the thing that might be um, solid all the way through, that, that might be worth sort of hanging on to, because otherwise we're sort of trying to say, what can I step back from and when? When do I not have to listen to my parents? Which is really the question that doesn't get asked whenever we talk about this, because they're wrong sometimes, or I, I'm old enough to do it better, or, or you can pick your justification or your excuse. Um, we'll, we'll talk about why that doesn't change, but, but maybe let's start with the premise. Why does God give us a fourth commandment? do you think? Because the presupposition there, I think, matters more than anything else. Why do you think God gives us a fourth commandment? Honor your father and your mother. Well, because there's this kind of um, genealogical hierarchy that happens. Okay. And yes, Dr. Busher, if you're listening to this, yeah, yeah got it from I his I want to make it simpler. Um. No, let's, let's <laughs> simplify it. Um, I, I'll ask it in a, a, a sillier way then. The presupposition right. to the question really, really matters. If you if you have that off base, it, it, it the whole question itself is going to not make sense. So for example, when my son was little, don't touch the stove was a, um, a commandment in our house. We had the first 10, but there was the 11th commandment too. Thou shalt not <laughs> touch the stove. Um, did I give that commandment because the stove is actually a food monster and what it would happen is it, the, the oven underneath it, the mouth would open and it would vomit up food for us to eat. But if you poked it in the eye, which was the stove, it would be angry and it wouldn't vomit food. So you would go hungry and that's why you can't touch the stove. Is that the right presupposition? No. <laughs> no. Um, is it, I want to keep you safe? Yes. All right, so the, the, the commandments to the stove have to do with, I want to keep you safe. And, and so as he grows and can use the stove safely, it might even 
turn into, here's how to use the stove by yourself so that I don't have to make you food all the time and you can make your own toasty cheese sandwich. Um, and let me, let me read my book. Uh, when it comes <laughs> so to the more, fourth commandment. It's more about guidance then. Is what I'm so there, there's a reason behind all the rules. That That's what I'm saying. Um, and so God gave us a fourth commandment, a, a rule, a law. But there's a reason he gave it. And, and you're right. There, there's um, a, a genealogy um, that, that goes there. There's a structure to it. But why would God institute that? Simple words. Simple words. I think too much for this. <laughs> like, can you ask it in a different way? Sure. Uh, does God want to take care of you or not? Yes. Who does it give you to do that? Our parents. Yeah. The point of the fourth commandment is that God actually wants to work through certain people to care for you. And for that to, to go well, it's going to look like certain things at certain times. But the fourth commandment is always, always, always structured because he wants to care for you through your parents. Um, and, and that means um, that uh, every parent listening to this with their kid is going to get a little bit smug and see, see, it hurts me more than it hurts you. There's a reason for, for all of these things. And I know you don't see it right now, but I'm doing all of this to take care of you. But really, actually, this is a chance for, for parents to sort of look in the mirror when it comes to the fourth commandment. Are the things that you're doing actually caring for your child where your child is today. Because there's a certain point in time where if I told my son, thou shalt not touch the stove as a 26 year old, I might actually be doing him a disservice. Um, the point of the fourth commandment is that I would I would care for my children. And so that that isn't just sort of keeping them safe in, in what I imagine, but keeping them safe where they are. Um, it, it's, it's gonna grow a little bit then, even when the explanation to the catechism won't change a bit, the commandment itself, though it, though it sort of changes in, in sort of the way that it's practiced never changes a dot or a tittle. Um, but, but sort of a, as your parents are, are engaging with this, are, are they, are they aware of what's really going on or are they imagining something different? Are, are they talking to their kids or, or are they assuming, uh, are, are they, are they actually allowing them the space to, to grow up, to face the things that the world, the devil and their own sinful flesh will, will throw at them? Or are they, they just trying to protect them from it? And there's a time and a place to protect, but sooner or later that has to shift even when, because the commandment doesn't, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, one thing that I've also heard, um, with this commandment is people kind of translate the honor your father and your mother as you must do as i say because i am your father or your mother always and it doesn't really allow for that different like hey you're older than two now you you can honor me in different ways other than following what i say exactly to the letter so so honor is there but obey is there too our, our catechism is something that we, we hang on to. Um, so let's let's maybe unpack that a little bit too, because like this is always, when don't I have to listen to them? Um, and I think honor is maybe the, the word to start with because you're right, obey is tricky. So we, we honor our parents, not because they have earned our honor, but because God has. Um, this is one of those things that we really, really need to get across. Um, your parents will do things that will make you respect them less. They will be sinners that your parents will be wrong sometimes and you will see it. Um, and, and if all we want to sort of go by is honor that, that we can earn by the law, well, the people that you live with the most, that, that you see it, that the most, you'll, you'll find them sinning the most. Uh, but, but here's the question. Can your God work through them even when they're sinners? Yes. That's, that's why we honor them in the same way. So when you go to church, you, you honor the altar, right? Like we, we, we recognize it's a special table. We don't play cards on it. We don't have potlucks on it. That table's only for communion and, and we keep the book on it so we can pray. Um, but, but we honor that table, not because it's a special table, but because God works at that table. And in the same way, your parents are worthy of honor because God works through them. Um, so we must obey God rather than man. Um, there, there's a place there where, where we can say, if you are commanding me out uh, against the will of God, then no, this, this does not warrant honor or obedience. Uh, the, the vocations are actually given because God wants to care for you through people. But when when you sort of abandon the care for the people that you're charged with, you you sort of abandon the vocation. Um, and this is why parents who abuse their kids are, are not parents in the eyes of the Lord. Um, they, they have ceased to be that thing. And, and God in his mercy so often will send somebody else to, to care for. Um, but at, at the same time, when, when we sort of deal with um, obey, well, if it doesn't 
go against the word of God, then then we hang on to it. But but it's worth sort of I think the discussion for the parents at one point in time is is the demand that you're making hindering your child. This is the question that that has to be wrestled, and there's not a clean answer. This is what makes it even messier. Like there is not a book for this. We have no idea what we're doing. You know, you don't feel like a grown up. I don't feel like a grown up. It's terrifying all the time. Um, but but maybe we can also sort of recognize that. And this is one of the great gifts of of sort of this vocation is we can see in each other our worst, not the best. I I, I hate being an optimist when it comes to other people because when you can actually be a pessimist, um, you get to say, well, what if they're a sinner just like I'm a sinner? What if they're ang- anxious just like I'm anxious, confused and and overwhelmed just like me? And then we we can talk about the obedience part. Um, we 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 can have a discussion. Um, but but the parents, if your goals are to to not let your kids grow up. You're doing them a disservice. Um, they, they need to. How that's practiced, that's up to you, not them. That's up to you as a parent. Um, and, and kids, uh, you get to actually recognize here, God wants to work through a sinner. And that's a profound gift because if God's not going to work through sinners, there's not going to be anybody left and you're going to be all alone. Um, and, and so it, as it plays out, um, I, I think instead of trying to find a, a reason to sort of squeeze honor into something your parents have done to be worthy of it, you can just sort of, can I find God here at all? because that that's what's worthy of honor. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's a really good thing to remember because like you said, so many people get stuck on the serve and obey part that they're like, this is the only thing that happens in this commandment. This is the only part of it that's worthwhile because it serves me and what I want to do. Um, and then you kind of got to look uh... at that and be like, hmm, maybe, maybe, Maybe that's not what those words are actually there for. So use something really, really, really profound. And I want to kind of call attention to, and, and it serves me. The law wasn't given to serve you. The, the way that we deal with the second table of law, it's actually about serving our neighbor. And so if the law is serving you and not your neighbor, then you've already made a perversion of it. Um, honor your father and mother. Uh, it, it's, it's about, it's not about sort of how a child behaves. It's about how parents serve their children and about how children receive from their parents. It's it's both ways. Um, if, if the law is about serving yourself, yeah, that's that's a mockery. Yeah, you got to be real careful so, with that. You got to be real yeah. careful with that. What what do you do when it's messy? <sighs> well, you turn because it's going to get messy. Okay, <laughs> yeah. and do what? And, like help me out. Well, he's called our Father in heaven for a reason. Hmm. Like we can go to him and that's kind of like the model of for lack of better term like model of our parenthood i guess because we get to call him father and um he loves us as dear children and like love their dear father and all of that and so when you're looking at your parents and you're like oh man you know this sucks like why why did you make me do this why why are you having me do this or that or whatever um you can go it's like well they have my best interest at heart because my parents love me just like god loves me there's nothing that i can do to my parents or they can do to me that will break that bond of love especially with the fourth commandment when you're cherishing and honoring and loving your father and your mother Hmm. I like that. So we're relying on presuppositions again. Um, my parents love me when it, it's messy. Let's start with: Do your parents love you or not? Are they? And and even more profound, again, even even more fundamental. Does your father in heaven love you enough to work through them, even should they not? Um, like there, there are some absolute yeses that you can get, and, and then you get to recognize. So when you're angry or frustrated, when when you're hurting, um, it's really hard to have that sacrificial kind of love. And so the discussion to figure out who's right might actually need to wait until people aren't hurting or mad because then it's hard to be sacrificial. Uh, it, it's hard to be sacrificial when you stub your toe. I just want to say bad words. Um, and, and the emotional ones are even deeper. They, they really are because they cut to identity, um, especially when you're trying to grow up and, and your parents see you in your eyes as, as a child. It's it's an attack on, on who you are. Um, that hurts enough where I... I fought back. Um, when when your parents recognize that they're wrong and they don't know what to do to get to right because they just don't know the right answer, that's an attack on their identity. Um, and in the same way, it 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 it, it embitters, it hurts. Um, so it, it might be a place where um, 
it just sort of in practice for Christian families, stop and say the Lord's Prayer together. Hold hands while you do it even maybe. I don't know. You don't have to. You, you, you can just go to your room and have a time out. But like, what if you just stopped in the middle of an argument and started saying the Lord's Prayer? Like, wouldn't that be a, a just a, a curveball? Um, because now all of a sudden, um, we're, we're going to get to that awkward petition of forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and recognize that both of those forgivenesses come from the cross where Jesus died for both of the people there. Um, we might need to have this discussion in a day or two. We might need to calm down or even just figure out something together. Together. But um, it, it's not going to ever be from a point of right. It's going to be from a point of helping. A and it's not going to ever come from a point of pain or frustration, but but from that that sac sacrificial love that, that happens when God is at work through these vocations to, to, to build up. So let's lean into the places where, where that actually happens, you know? Yeah. And again, if you come to it from the, I have to be right, and forgive us our trespasses, look what you did. Like, again, you're kind of... <laughs> perverting it and being like hmm yeah i i didn't do anything in this situation but it takes two to have an argument still well and, and the other part of that petition you have to and they are forgiven mm -hmm. like there's no more yeah. dangling this over your head we can maybe try and learn from it together but there is no more uh, sin to be punished jesus for that mm -hmm. and that's a really easy thing to forget and to hold on to that's why we have to pray that way. That's why we have to be reminded. That's why we have to go to church and hear it preach to us. So we'll, we'll lean into those things. And and what's what's wonderful is they will not fix anything. Um, and, and what I mean by that is, is that um, when you still have problems with your folks or your folks still don't know what to do, the answer still holds. It, it's not measured by what did your parents become perfect parents or did you never get angry with them or never sin in front of them again? But, but rather, is there still a font that pours forth forgiveness for both of you? And as long as that that's the case, then it's going to be messy, but it, it's going to be, it's going to be soothed. It's going to be comforted and forgiven along the way too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good thing to remember. We're going to hang on to that. All right, Paige. Thanks for hanging out. It's an uncomfortable one, uh, but we're, <laughs> we're, it, those are the ones you got to talk about. So, so thank you for sort of coming on and wrestling with that with me. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. See you later.